Yeah, look, if someone, if someone else is working, you need permission for it. That's yeah. the bottom line, because you can't earn money off another guy. And I would think spaces like this in Cape Town is so that you could contact a producer like this who could probably kick the hell out of that other instrument. So that's my opinion. There's a group of Ravens meet now making beats that better than some of the stuff that people can be using like for. And we need yeah. to know that, we need to share that yeah. information with each other so you know what to build on. Yeah. Who is willing to share? <laughs> Can I come in at this point? You're like wanting to sound like a lawyer. But there are situations where you don't need that person's permission. You, let's just say Lee, for example, did something amazing. And I'm going to parody him. I'm going to rip him off. I mean, if you a song that rips off that chart oh. number, Parody. Yeah. Under American copyright law, there are certain instances where you don't need someone's permission. And South African copyright law. Uh, I'm an academic or journalist and I'm commenting on something, review, analysis, etc., etc., personal use, studying, etc., etc. Uh, right? But if you're an artist, a two love crew set this piece in the name of Pretty Woman by Robert Morgan. Yeah. Uh, Campbell versus Acker Flows. Right? Went after them. I'm going to sue you, ass. They argued, no, we were parodying Roy Orbison. <laughs> we were ripping him off. So, yeah, they won. They set the legal piece inside the contract law. US contract law. Parody is recognized as fair use. Now, the problem with South Africa is we've got fair dealing. And it's a really comprehensive list of things. But it doesn't technically, it doesn't quite exactly cover parody. But a case can be made. Uh, for this, and the equivalent of our legal history was actually a chain of your case. Laughter of the people of the beer. The argument here is a chain of infringement, you violated section 34.1c of the chain of And they were like, no! Yeah, all those, no, we can't do that. Black deals, black white deals, black deals. Just because it's like labels. And so these are positive decisions that don't need a cop that's sticky, but. Chain of equivalent and, and yeah. courts, the constitutional courts said actually beer and t-shirts are not comparable and when you protect chain box, they've got to be comparable products and it means potentially confused with each other. Yeah. Yeah. So section 16 of the constitution trumps that and actually the, the chain box act doesn't even apply in that situation. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. Um, Thomas, yeah. Yeah. After Erasmus, I mean the intellectual property know those ones. They're still not convinced that the constitutional court made the right decision. But I think in, in, that, in that instance it does. But it's, it's, it's always interesting. I don't, it, it works very well with the trademark law. Um, because like they're saying, you know, with trademark things like, um, is it in, are they uh, as goods that are in competition, etc., confusion, possible will come into, into, into play. But with copyright, if you're, like with a song, you know, it's already, you're immediately in the same space. As you know, so it's it's it's, 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 it's you have to really work on, on an argument. <laughs> but it is delicate because you look at Weird Al. He's I'm probably say, well, well, you know, and and, and he has it down to the finest art. You look like Reggie Watts. I love your hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you don't know Reggie Watts, it's well worth looking him up. Sorry, that was just weird. Um, but Weird Al also <laughs> understands. That you know, in in terms of doing this, it is always better just to ask ahead. He's going to do it anyway. Um, and and again, he's. Um, I'm going to put some stuff up on the Creative Commons website for you to explore, in terms of the battles that he's had as well. You, you know, and I, I'm very much Adam and I have chatted about this thing of I'm longing for more creative defiance from us here. I think that as South Africans, we're, we're incredibly compliant. When we shouldn't be. I mean, there's like a small little Occupy Cape Town thing happening outside the library here today. But we don't do it wholeheartedly. We don't dive in. And I think knowing your rights, knowing what you can do, gives you the strength to step in and be creative and know that you've got backup. You know, when, because you may need to go to constitutional court, and like Justin, you may get incredibly broken by that experience. It's rigorous. It is expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, you will get people giving you death threats potentially. But this is the space of learning. Coming in, 
learning from each other and knowing what you can do, especially in terms